Hey there, and welcome to The Gathering. My name is Maddie. I am one of the pastors here, and I want to thank you for joining us in worship today. Before we roll into the message, there are a few things that I want to point out to you. First, if you haven't already, be sure to go and click the subscribe button on our channel. And while you're there, turn on notifications for The Gathering. Sermons like this one drop every Sunday. They're available all week long on demand. We've also got shorts that come out every week, additional content on our channel. There's a ton going on here, and I want to make sure that you don't miss anything. So subscribe and turn on notifications so you always know when a video drops. You can also head to the description of this video to find a link to our website to learn more about our church, a link to give if you're interested in doing that today, and I highly encourage you to explore that, and a link to fill out a connect card. When you fill that card out, it tells me that you're here so that I have the chance to reach out, say hello, and help you get connected to online community. Now, that's all of the logistics that I have for you. So we're going to roll into the message. And if you like what you hear, if it resonates with you, or if you think of someone who might be impacted by what we talk about today, I encourage you to share this sermon with a friend. All right, that's all I've got. Enjoy. Hey there, my name is Tim Ziegler, and I'm the site pastor here at McCausland as part of the gathering. And I'm so glad that you've joined us for worship here, wherever you might be on this day. Growing up, My family always made it a point to have dinner together around the kitchen table as often as we could. Part of that meant beginning each meal there with a prayer. Usually we would sing Johnny Appleseed, that classic prayer tradition that my family continues to this day. Sometimes we would choose to sing a different song, a different prayer, one that was in Swedish. It was always fun having Uh, friends, one of my siblings' friends show up or one of their new bows at the table because their reaction will always be something like, is this for real? We were that family and still are. And of course, we take the time to chat about the value we place in not only sharing a meal together, but inviting God to bless the food that will in turn bless us to live the lives that more closely resemble the life of Jesus. Personally, I started a personal devotional prayer life as a young teenager. I would usually lie in bed and think of the good things that I'd gotten to be a part of that day. In church each week, we would often kneel down in our pews at a certain point in the service, and I would think that the lack of the hair on my head in this bald spot, which I've had since I was like 13, would somehow increase my ability to effectively communicate with God like it was a prayer highway of sorts. As an aside, I just got a haircut, and my barber was sharing with me that one of the questions she gets a lot is, what is the craziest haircut that you've ever given? One year for Halloween, some dude came in wanting to shave the top of his head and just leave the bowl so that he could look like Friar Tuck. She obliged. This caused me to do a short research uh, project on this to remind myself why on earth Monks choose to do this, and it's to eschew vanity. The point is to look unfashionable. This is not a hairstyle I am seeking out, but it is one that might find me nevertheless. Prayer is a familiar word to us. It's all over pop music. And even at Deadpool and Wolverine, there's a whole montage of Madonna's Like a Prayer behind being played underneath the gratuitous action. Maybe we remember it from other films, like My Best Friend's Wedding, or from other popular artists, like MC Hammer, or Mariah Carey, or Michael Bolton, Andrea Bocelli, Celine Dion. The list goes on and on and on. And though familiar, prayer can often be misunderstood. It can sometimes feel like a daunting task, a spiritual obligation, or even a performance. There have certainly been times when prayer felt like a chore in which one needed to have the right position or posture. So folks would close their eyes and kneel and attempt to conjure up the perfect words as if that's what God was looking for, a type of five on an AP prayer test. In these situations, it's easy to enter them with an empty heart. And when we approach prayer in this type of perfunctory way, We often are not able to help alleviate one of the most pervasive problems of our time, that of the racing mind. Today, we are going to look at prayer as something far simpler 
and perhaps even more profound. We're going to look at prayer as a conversation with God. As we begin to view prayer as a conversation, things change. All of a sudden, there's less pressure to get it right or to pray perfectly. None of that stuff is the actual point. Here at the gathering, we call these things that we are talking about in this series, Faith in Practice, How to Follow Jesus, simply practices. We don't call them perfections. We call them practices because we believe that in order to be the people God is calling us to be as the gathering, these are the patterns for our behavior and shared life that lead us closer to Jesus. We know from Scripture that Jesus prayed a lot. He prayed so much that even his most devoted followers would sometimes fall asleep as he continued to pray. Prayer is something that we strive to do personally daily, in groups, and in worship. That's how important we feel that prayer is. And if you are not a great prayer, don't worry, we got you. There's always stuff we can do to improve. It's a practice, not a perfection. We believe that having a personal prayer life is important in the life of faith and in, the, in growing as a Jesus follower. Usually, this means creating space and time each day to connect with Jesus, to have conversation with the divine. In groups, we pray for one another, which requires vulnerability and asking for help. This, too, is an important part of persons who want to draw closer to Jesus. And each and every time we gather together for worship, we pray. We pray in song, we pray via the leader's voices on stage, and we unite our voices around the the Lord's prayer at the table for communion. We should keep in mind, however, that praying is not about perfection. It is about honesty. As the poet Mary Oliver writes, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be quick. It doesn't have to happen standing on your head. It can be as simple as letting your thoughts rest in God's presence. In the conversational realm, we never script out a talk that we're going to have with a friend or a loved one. And prayer can be like that too. It can be similar to talking with a dear friend, one who loves you and only wants the best for you. You don't need a script, just an open heart. Prayer is about sharing your joys, sorrows, your hopes, and your fears. It's also about listening, listening for God's voice in the midst of our lives. When the disciple, these 12 dudes who were actually with Jesus, when they approached him yearning for his instruction, he taught them what we now call the Lord's Prayer, and which we pray every time we gather for worship. We discover this encounter between Jesus and the disciples in Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. It begins this way. Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. We are 2,000 years removed from Jesus' earthly ministry and those of his earliest disciples. Isn't it nice to know that there is help when we ask for it too? We are not alone in wondering how we can pray to be more like Jesus or how to pray in a way that Jesus modeled for us in order to connect more wholly with the divine. Jesus' response was simply, when you pray, say, Father, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who has wronged us, and don't lead us into temptation. This Lord's Prayer is a model and a template for how we are to pray to be more like Jesus. He is the one who taught it, after all, and seems to be rather familiar, it seems to be a rather familiar aspect of his prayer life. Start by addressing God. Pray for God's divine realm to enter into now. Pray for the ability to satisfy our daily needs and pray for forgiveness as well as our ability to forgive others and not to be led into temptation. The writer Anne Lamont breaks, our, breaks down our most common prayer themes into three, word, three one-word categories. Help, thanks, wow. With these, we understand that we can ask for help when we need 
We give thanks for what God has given us. We celebrate that God's power is greater than that of our own and that we can both be forgiven, forgive others, and overcome temptation. These are not easy things, but they can be accomplished through prayer in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We are also reminded to share our amazement with God, the wowness often recounted in praying. Prayer, after all, is not a rigid formula, but a broad roadmap that helps to provide some structure and intentionality in our conversations with God. But most importantly, we pray for a deeper connection with Jesus. Cole Arthur Riley reminds us that prayer is not asking God to change things, but asking for the grace to accept them. Prayer is not three wishes or a genie or a magic lamp. Prayer both requires lifting up our needs, celebrations and sorrows, but also closely listening so that we might align our own motives, words, and actions with those of Jesus. Prayer is about finding peace in the midst of storms while also discovering strength in our weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Prayer can take many forms. We can think a prayer in the quiet depths of our hearts and minds. We can speak a prayer aloud with others. We can sing our hearts out in worship or act out our prayers through service. We can ask for prayers from our community. What is it that you are praying for today? What is it that you are listening for today? We have an active prayer ministry here at the gathering. The best way, one of the best ways to make a prayer known, apart from telling someone like a site pastor or someone in your core group, core group is to go to our website and fill out a care slash prayer form. You can find it by heading over to gatheringnow.org slash care. And this is available all of the time and is a terrific way to ensure that whatever is on your heart is being prayed over by others and that you will be followed up with as well. As our faith grows, so does our prayer life. And as our prayer life grows, so does our faith. We move from the basics of talking to God to developing a deeper relationship. We begin to explore new ways of praying, not to resist vulnerability, but to step into the unknown with trust. And remember, prayer is not just about our individual needs. Prayer is a journey, not a destination. It's a lifelong conversation that deepens and evolves as we grow and change in faith. Like a tender plant, our prayer life needs nurturing and care. We begin by planting the seeds of prayer. We learn the basics, perhaps starting with requests for guidance, help, and simple prayers of gratitude, thanks, while paying attention to the beauty of nature, all while beginning to catch to catch glimpses of the sacred in every moment. Wow. As we continue to water the seeds of our prayer life, we notice growth. We establish a regular prayer practice, perhaps setting aside specific times for quiet reflection. We begin to notice patterns in our prayers, themes that emerge from our hearts. Our connection with God deepens and we experience the transforming power of prayer in our lives. But growth also involves stretching. It means stepping out of our comfort areas, trying new and varied forms of prayer, and risking vulnerability. It's like climbing a mountain. The view is breathtaking, but the journey is challenging. Howard Thurman, a profound spiritual leader, wrote, Don't ask for the meaning of life. Ask for the capacity to encounter it. Prayer is about ever expanding our own capaciousness to encounter the sacred in every moment. Wow. It's about allowing God to stretch us beyond our perceived and self-imposed limitations. Remember that throughout growing and stretching in prayer, we need to be patient and to offer grace to ourselves. There will be times when we might not be able to pray. Times when our world has been turned upside down and in those moments rely on those friends and colleagues and loved ones who will pray on your behalf. Those folks who show up with casseroles and wine and long walks in the botanical gardens during those dark nights of our souls. There are sure to be seasons of plenty for our praying selves and, and there will be seasons of drought as well as storms that 
will rage when we can't even hear our own voice, let alone God's voice. Be patient. Offer grace. Rely on others. Doubt will be a part of it. Doubt, after all, accompanies this faith dance on the daily. Life's busyness will distract us from truly embracing the inherent sacredness of every moment. This one, and this one, and this one, and the next one. Even in challenging times, we can find solace in prayer. It is a refuge, a place of healing, and a source of strength. And it's as close to us as our very breath. Prayer is not a solitary act confined to our personal devotions. We do pray on our own and also in core groups. And each and every time we gather for worship, prayer is also an outward-facing practice. It's a, it's a way of, of blessing. When we pray, we become conduits of God's grace, pouring out blessing on those around us, only wanting what's best for them and doing everything in our power to make it happen. We are called to be a prayer, living our lives as a reflection of God's love. In a world often marked by division and despair, our prayers can be a beacon of hope. When we lift up the concerns of our community, our nation, our world, we participate in God's work of healing and reconciliation. One of the main points of prayer is also to embody it so as to become a blessing to the world ourselves. When we pray, we tap into a source of divine energy that transcends time and space. This energy can heal, restore, and transform us. The theologian Kate Bowler reminds us that our lives are already prayers, even if we don't realize it. Every act of kindness, every moment of compassion, every step toward justice is a prayer offered to the world. As we grow in prayer, we discover that it's not just about our personal relationship with Jesus, but it's also becoming a channel of God's love and grace in the world. As we pray for others, our hearts are expanded and our compassion grows. I invite you today, right now, to see yourself as a blessing. You are a prayer answered. You are a hope fulfilled. You are a sign of God's love in the world. Wow. Thanks. Usually toward the end of a sermon, we are invited to offer a prayer. And most of us, almost instantaneously, fold our hands, clasp our hands together, bow down and close our eyes. Today, my prayer for us will be in the form of a blessing. Do whatever you feel comfortable with. If it means bowing and clasping your hands and closing your eyes, cool. If not, do something else. There are many different... There are many different ways in which we are able to pray, many different postures and positions. So these are my prayers for you and for us this week and every week. And if you choose to receive them with a slightly different posture of prayer or blessing, that'd be rad. So may we see prayer as a conversation, a gift, and a way of life. May prayer open our hearts. May we, through prayer, listen deeply and trust in the power of Jesus' love to transform us and the world around us. May we commit ourselves to nurturing our prayer lives. May we create sacred spaces in our homes, our hearts, and our communities. And may we embrace the journey knowing that Jesus is always with us, guiding our steps and answering our prayers in ways that exceed our expectations. May your prayers be filled with gratitude, compassion, and thanks. May you be a living prayer offering hope and healing and wholeness to all you encounter and who encounter you. May you leave this place filled with a renewed sense of wonder and possibility. May your ears be open to the gentle whispers of God's Spirit guiding you on your unique journey. May your hands be instruments of peace, compassion, and justice. May your lives be living prayers, offering hope and healing to a world in need. May God's dreams for you 
be ones of boundless love, unwavering faith, and extraordinary purpose. May you discover the depths of your own potential as you partner with the divine. May the blessings of God rest upon you and remain with you always and forever. Amen.